Land Rover Freelander 2. What are we doing today? We are going to upgrade the fog lights. Now we've done this upgrade on the Disco 3 and the 4 and there's someone that keeps hassling me saying you said you're going to do it for the Freelander 2. So I promise, I'm keeping my promise, I'm going to do the upgrade. So what are we going to do? We are going to upgrade these normal halogen ones that end up looking like that. Can you see that Tyler? And they're obviously Almost. powered with a, oh, look, they get all corroded. You know? I can't get that bulb out. Well, how did you bulb? We're going to upgrade these to super lush LED ones. And it's a two in one LED. So it's got a function. We'll have a look at the lights in a minute. But it's got a daytime running light function built in. So all the time you're driving along, you've got these nice modern looking daytime running lights. And then if you need to, you've got the fog lights. And they're LED fog lights. And remind me, Tyler, at the end of the video, we'll put it up against the workshop door, we'll spin it around, and have a look at that lovely flat yeah. beam pattern, which is quite important. Right, let's, let's have a look. So we are gonna, so we have put together a whole kit to enable you to wire this in. So let's have a look at the fog lights and let's talk about the functionality. Right, if I muck up in this video, this is like the fourth time I've done this video, Tyler. We should be good by now. Experts. Experts, right. I can even take them out of the box almost. Right, so the fog lights, there we go. So when you put them in, you've got to make sure that the, the actual LEDs are mounted at the top there on that little circuit board. They're at the top shining down. Um, so that's how they're going to sit in. And you've got a left and a right. So this one is going to sit over here with the C shape facing towards the middle. And the other one is opposite. Now, the fog light is the middle bit and the daytime running light is the sort of C shape so you get this sort of C shape um, wiring we'll, we'll go through the wiring kit but basically we've had these made with the fog function literally just plugs in straight away now this extra wire powers the daytime running light and someone said that can't be right because you need two wires to power anything and they're not wrong in that but it actually uses the same earth here so you've got this black wire the earth for the fog light so that goes into the lamp, so it's already got one earth. So these are wired, and that's the daytime running light. Right, so that's all cool, that's all good. Right, but it starts to get a bit more complicated. In Europe, when you have daytime running lights, they've obviously got to be quite bright, because in the daytime, to, be, to see light in the daytime, they've got to be super bright. And if you leave them at that brightness at night, everyone driving the other way is all like, hey, turn your lights down. So day. DRLs, daytime running lights, by European law must either turn off or dim, like that. When, when you put your side lights on, it thinks it's dark, and so the, the daytime running lights. So we have designed a circuit board. Well, Bernard designed a circuit board. Our man Bernard designed these for us. Can I open this? Okay. With pure strength. Pure strength. Have the damage in it. Getting into the Land Rover again. This is the best bit of the kit. Right. This is this is the PS de Resistance. There we go. Right. So this is a daytime running lock. Now we tried a load of these that we bought off eBay, and we couldn't get one that worked in the manner we wanted. So we have designed our own. It's got our own. There you go. It even says it's us. Look. Go on there. Um, and it's got a tricky IC, and it's programmable, and we we've, we've programmed it all to do some tricky stuff. Well. Not me, but Bernard has, but we specified it. So it's quite simple. It's got the two outputs here for the daytime running light. You'll notice that it's got a plus and a minus. For these lights, as already discussed, we don't need to connect the minus, um, just the two positives. And they're left and right, notice. And then it's got a series of inputs. So, and we'll connect these up and show you how. You need the battery positive and negative. Um, it's got the left hand indicator, the right hand indicator because we've also made it with a functionality so that when you indicate, often when you're indicating, you can't see your indicators if your daytime running light is too close to the indicator because your daytime running light is super bright and the indicator's sort of doing this and you can't see it. So we're making the daytime running light shut off so you can see the indicator going. Now, you don't have to connect that. If you don't want that functionality, and to be fair, on the Freelander 2, the indicators here and the DRLs there. So you might not be first on that, but the board will work. Just don't connect the indicators into it. It will save you a bit of wiring, but it was cheaper for us to get all the functionality in the board. If you don't want it, you don't need it, right? Now, the other clever thing is, 
with this board is that you'll notice there's no input for an ignition live. So how does this board know that you've turned your ignition on? Well, it's got a sensor built into it. And when your, when your engine starts, the alternator starts, and your battery voltage rises from around 12 to around 14. So this senses the change in voltage at your battery and then turns it on. There's a slight delay as the voltage builds up. And also this board, when you turn your car off, it sees the voltage drop from 14 volts to 12, and it then gives you 30 seconds. Well, if we timed it, it's about 30 seconds, isn't it? It's long enough. Long enough. You don't, and what is It's the follow me home light feature. Mm. So as you pull up on your deluxe mansion, your, and you lock your car and shut it, it gives you 30 seconds to walk up your deluxe gravel drive to your fine house. Um, right. Um, so if we covered all the features here, we have got, and then obviously it's got the dimming. So it's got one wire there for side light. And when you connect that to your car side light, when you turn your side lights or headlights, because the side lights come on with headlights, when you turn any form of those lights on, it will reduce the power of these daytime running lights. Right. That is all good and brandy, right? We've made an easy wiring kit. Now, obviously there's only a... Right, that is heat shrink, and that is when we when we've got it all going, we will encompass that in there, and that will keep the weather and stop any of these bits touching anything. And then we've got a wiring kit. Now the wiring kit comes in two looms. Honestly, it does. Right, this loom here is just the battery connection loom, and it comes with an inline fuse. No need to sort of cut too much to fit that. That just plugs into an empty fuse we found on the Freelander two. So that, and then that gives us our positive and negative for the board. Then we have got this loom, and basically this has got all the connections for the controller board up there. And then it's got the connections for the, to go onto the headlight and the indicator, and also our outputs for the fog light. So I've got to get this right. So the green, so, that is side light, that is indicator, that is indicator, and these other two are the daytime running lights. Now we only need one of these wires, we don't need the black earth, but we'll go through that. So basically, we should be able to do it right. Let's start, shall we, Tyler? Right, Let's go. step by step, open the box. Oh, he's good, he's good. Right, second step, let's remove the headlights. We've got to remove both headlights. It's not too tricky on the Freelander 2 they're on a tricky little dock. So 10 millimeter sockets on the top there. Right, then we've got to reach in the back. Shall I grab that torch? Let's see if we can... Right, in the back here, we are looking for this. Oh look, you've got this little oh. cut out in the top. We're looking for this little bit here. And if we pull this up, it, it lifts a little bit, I'll show you. And then the headlight just slides out on this tricky little dock system. But you sort of got, there you go. You've got to be careful as you wrestle it out, right? And then you've got the connector here, boop, and then you press. It's a bit twisted, this one. You know, it's that Tyler. Normally yeah. they're quite square, but, yeah. but this one's got it at a little off angle, oblique angle. So you have to push in. It's probably quite useful, really. Push in that little bit there, and then that releases the headlight. And then what yeah. you're doing with this, this little rod here, as you pull that, you can see it releases that at the bottom and you've got that little clamp and that releases it from its little grippage here and it's all free to go as soon as you pull that out so that's the headlight out we'll do the same on the other side right and what we're going to do is we're going to put the board in here and we need to route all the wires from where our control board because we're going to connect into this fuse box so we need to now string it all out across here right Fog light, how did you, what's the best way of getting them out, Tyler, did from you then, reckon? From this way, pushing from it out. Way, pushing it, there you go, look at that. All right. Some of them, on other cars will have a little cut out that you can pull at the top. Oh yeah, yeah, because this is the later bumper. The process, the wiring is exactly the same. So whether you've got the, ours is actually the early car with the later bumper. So yours will have, you're right, Tyler, good point. So they will have, a, you'll have a completely round one and there's a little finger hole at the top on those, isn't there? And you can get in and get the, so that's that out. Right, then you've got to get your old crusty fog light out. Right, you've now got three screws holding it in. Now, I'm not sure these screws are original. 
You might find they've got a Torx T20 fixing in them. But, but certainly you will have three fixings on them. Oh. Is he going to fight me, Diana? Shouldn't be. Come on. Come on, baby. Have you spoken nicely to it today, Diana? Not yet. Not yet. There we go. All right. So, yeah, I don't think these are original, but you'll have three screws, similar thing. This one was in the wars. I thought this one crashed, like everything we buy. <laughs> this is our old Freelander 2 with the new bumper, and we've got the new Freelander 2, 2 without a bumper. Without a bumper, you've got to fix that one up, yeah. We're a bit behind. A bit behind on some of these projects we've had. All sorts happening. This COVID thing has put us a little bit behind. But I think I've got to be fair with there's people out there in a lot worse positions than us, isn't there, Tyler? Hmm. So well, that's true in any situation. I mean, no, I mean, it has hit people out there. We just keep our heads down and keep out of it. Alright. That one's a bit tricky, there he is. He's a bit, yeah. He's a bit. Right. And then it. And then you should wrestle this out. So it's interesting, it's got four, these are quite a generic fog lamp. They're used on a lot of cars. So they've got this sort of four mounting, but yeah, you won't have, and you can see the three little green plastic clips that form the mount. Um, so then we can release this fog light. Now it looks like it's got two little wings. 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 You can sort of fight that off, don't you, Tyler? There you go, look at that. So that is the old fog light that we no longer require. We do need to connect to this. That's going to form. So right, let me and Tyler strip the other side to this level and then we'll come back and start putting some wiring in. Right, let's start with the wiring. So obviously the one with all the connections is going to go to the control board, which is going to go... Now, I didn't mention our friends who live in countries where they decided for some bizarre reason to put the steering wheel on the other side of the car, your battery fuse box thing will be on that side and so you will do this in reverse you will put the connections up there but we've got it luckily on the correct side of the car mm. contentious right i think it's the better side better side right here we go so we are gonna put that through there now there's loads of room behind here now i'm not sure if i'm not missing some air ducts or something i wonder if this car is not quite what it should be i reckon there's probably supposed to be some um now Let's, 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 I'm going to go along the back here. Because we've got another wire running along here. It's always good to follow a pre-existing wire. All right. Now, all we've got to do, let's, we've got to get, let's get this right. We've got to get the black and orange down to this fog light aperture. But at the same time, we've got to have enough room to get this green one onto this headlight plug. So the logical place would seem to be to just tuck that down there. There we go. Right, that goes down beyond there. So we've got that to there. That looks all right, doesn't it, Tyler? Yeah. That to there, that to there. Right, that's that side done. We'll cable tie that up in a minute. <clears throat> right, so on this side, we want that that way. And we need to get this one down. Same again. Right, is he gonna? Is he... Oh, yeah, I've got room, I've got room. Right, well, there we go. We've got that there. That there. So we've got plenty of room now. So I'm going to cable tie. You let us cable tie this. So along here, you've got another wire running along this slam panel here. We'll cable tie that. And also you've got the bonnet cable. So we'll get that all tied neatly behind there. And then we'll come back and join you. Right, so here we have the right hand fog lamp. DRL, two in one. So the C is facing that way. The circuit board's up the top. It's going to go in like so. Wiring the fog light is, ah, oh, you say it's easy. You have to be careful a bit here, don't we, Tyler? It can so, go wrong. Yeah, you can actually fit this two ways. The way we've designed it, um, it can go two ways. You've got to make sure on the Freelander 2, for some reason, yellow and black is earth. So that yellow and black needs to match up with the black. So you see you can put it on two ways. So the yellow and black comes all the way through and joins to the black. The grey wire joins to the red. So that should clip on on his little wings that's the fog light done easy right now i was 
leave this black one here. I wouldn't connect it to anything. That's just an earth, okay? But what we have to do now is on the right hand side we have to connect the orange wire to the yellow wire now we are going to do that you could do that the nicest way of doing it is to solder and heat shrink and do it that way we are and in the kit we do provide these little straight crimp connectors and they're okay but they're not ideal but, okay so you need to strip a little back a little bit back of the orange there we go and then the yellow drag i reckon i'm going to need a bit more than that is yeah. this the one we have to double over as well, Tom? Yeah. Yeah, it's be careful because it's with. quite a... Because these LEDs quite low power. The wires are quite thin. I mean, not low power. They're bright enough, believe me. Um, but they're... Because LEDs generally take less power than halogen. Oh, right, here we go. What's going on here? I'm making a mess of that. Right, hold on. Let me do this. Right, there we go. I managed to get that. Again, there's better ways of stripping a wire than just with a pair of side cutters. Right, this gonna... is probably what you'll have as a minimum. Yeah, I don't like to use too many flash tools. Because <laughs> not everyone's got those at home. So then, all right, let's make sure we get that in there. And then get that in the other hand. And then get a willing assistant. Mm -hmm. that... All right, get that black wire out of the way. Right, are you okay there, Tyler? Are you going to... Yeah. we got some Should of these flash right. ratchet crimpers. Go on the red. Wow, mm. go on then. I got them. Alright, that's that. We'll do it another one. Alright, there we go. Right. right, so there we are. We're all crimped up, ready to go. So that is the fog light wiring, and it's exactly the same for the one on the other side. One thing to note here, I didn't show you, is you do have an adjuster screw. So the bracket is fixed to the car, but that adjuster screw, you can adjust your fog lamp beam pattern unfortunately you will have to undo the, the screws so rather than fixing it in with three screws you might want to just fix it in with one or two and leave the cover off and then set it up on your garage floor but normally if you get it square it's all right so the bracket and the lamp are sort of the back surface of the lamp is parallel you'll be fine but if you're particularly keen on fog light beam adjusting that is your way to do it cool just what gets you up in the morning all right then there we go Right, and we'll get all that bolted back in. So we'll put the same screws back in there and get that bolted in there. We'll do that and we'll wire up the other fog light and then we'll come back for the slightly trickier bit on the headlights. Right, we have got the fog lights in both sides now. Have a little peek in there. They're all looking super lush now. So now we need to connect. Now, you're going to need to connect the side light one in for sure um, because that will give you your dimming, which is a legal requirement. Um, so that's the yellow wire. Um, the indicator one is optional, um, so you're only need, and we're going to tap into the back of this headlight connector, which has got the indicators in. So let's do the side light as is most important first. So Tyler's done a little diagram, and he'll show you on the computer. But basically, it will show this rear view of the connector with the little push at the top, and it goes pin one, two, three, then four. Now the pins we need are pin four is the indicator. Let me just check that, yeah. So pin four, which is a bluey with a little stripe, and the stripe's a different color on the left and the right. So that's where you're gonna tap your indicator in. And then the side light wire is in the middle of this top row, pin number two, which is green with some sort of faded red stripe. So let me get on and do that. So I've gotta connect this to this. Now again, you could strip it, solder it, heat sink, or we are gonna use these little scotch block connectors. And basically you put two wires through and the one of them passes all the way through it and then the other one just goes in and stops and then this is going to come down and like spear through the two and actually form a join and tap into it so it's a quick and easy way of doing it right so i'm going to put the the one that goes all the way through in first and i'm going to have to get it all the way to the to that back so it should slide along and you see it's in the back of the two on both sides right that's good then I'm going to put this one in. Now, you don't really want it coming out the end because there'll be a little bit of exposed copper that could touch something. So you want to bring it just back inside. And then if you get the pliers, Tyler, and without squeezing my thumbs, plunge that little portcullis thing. Oh, I've got it sticking out too far. Oh, oh, oh just in time. Right, hold on. Go on then. Yeah, got him. 
Right, and then check you've got that, check his clamp, look at that, perfect. The guillotine is down. The guillotine is down, and then you've got this little door, because obviously this will be live every time the side lights come on. So they're a clever connector. That not only keeps it closed, it also covers over the little exposed bit of metal. So that's the side light. <clears throat> right, let's get the indicator one on. So this is pin four. Slide that one over. Now on the other side, you've only got the indicator to connect, so it's somewhat easier, because you only need to connect it. That one's not quite going through. Go on, there you go, he's in now. Is he in now? I just don't reckon he's in. That's, no, yeah, he's in, he's in. He's in, right, and then get that one in. The top row, don't want him in too far. Right, there you go, Tyler, let's see if you can do that. My fingers are out of the way. Nice, like a pro, look at that. Right, so there we go. So now you can see we've neatly tapped into the, um, right, what we've now got to start thinking about is the circuit board. If you throw me the circuit board, Tyler. Now, now before we put the circuit board on, always, always, always the trink. trink. So, where's our little, our little loom has ended up here. So, Always get this on first before you do anything else. We haven't forgotten that yet, have we? Not yet. Okay, so get that out the way. Um, now what we're going to do is um, the two inputs from the fog lights, which are the purple and orange wires, okay, are going to go into the left and right DRL connections. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those fairly neatly and then I'm going to run these others that need to go in the other side up and over the top. So let me just cut these off and get these in. Okay, so we've got the purple wire going into the left one and then you can see I've stripped the wire. You don't want too much length on that and it's onto the positive. And then the orange goes into the positive for the right. You don't want too much exposed copper coming out if you can help it. Then tighten these little terminal screws up. Left and right is always relative to the car. As you were sat in the yeah. car, yeah. We had this debate the other day, didn't we? Yes. So so basically your purple wire is left, which should yeah. be on this side here. Um, and then the orange is on the other side there. So, and obviously if you're putting them in the other way round, if you're doing, you're going to have to reverse that, aren't you? If you're left-hand yeah. drive, your right's going to become your left, but you'll work that out soon enough. Right. Okay, so now I can route these up. Now, the side light wire, the yellow wire, let's do that next. And that goes into this lights one here. So second from the end where it says lights. Right, I'll connect that one in. Right, so I'm now connecting the, um, the left-hand indicator. And we can see it's the left-hand is the red and green because it's right next to me here. So let's get, so the wire that comes up here, the red and green goes into the left-hand indicator one there. Oh, it might be a bit long. He's not too bad. He's a little bit long. You don't really want any exposed copper at the end there. Not too much, anyway. Not too bad, as long as they're locked in and heat shrunk. Yeah. Yeah, right. Heat shrunk? Heat shrunkified. Right. And then the white and yellow is indicator right hand. Actually, I'm going to... He's a little bit long. It's... Bit of a haircut. Tony Blair cut. Right. Okay, he's not wanting to go in. There he goes. There he goes. Right, and the other last thing I did is I we had the black wire, which we know isn't connected at the fog lights, but for neatness, I've connected it onto one of these DRL minus. If you look on the reverse of the board, that you can see the negatives are actually joined together. This copper track goes across, so it doesn't matter which one you do. So that Right, is all ready. So the only two connections we've got now are the battery plus and minus. Now, the reason we do that last is everything we've done so far, everything is dead, right? You don't really want to be connecting your battery plus and minus first and then have it and it's sparking. So get everything as connected as you can. And then you need, ta-da, there we go. There's a parasitic. Our para, well, no parasitic yeah. so much. It's just the battery connectory thing, right with a fuse box. Right, so let's have a look. Right, 
So fuse I've box. coloured these fuse boxes. Yeah, get the light, get some illumination. Right, so there's your fuse box. It's got a nice fuse, it's quite nice that. And then there's got two tabs. I've coloured them orange because they're kind of hard to see. And you have to push that one that way and that one that way, basically away. And then lift. I'm going to have one gone. And then basically you want to lift this edge of the fuse box up like that because it's got it's got these little pins that sort of dock in the back. So it's very much a dock down and the front edge flaps up. There we go. Right. Now, we have some unused um, fuse locations here. And on the back of the fuse box, it says they're not used. Um, so these are free for anybody to use. So we're going to steal one of those. They've got 12 volts in them. So I think if we put the fuse, our little... A little piggyback thing. It's it's not really piggybacking because it's it's not going on. Right, and then what we got to do is route the power cable down down through there out the way. Now we've got to get this red this red cable. We've got to get it out of the fuse box now. So if we tuck it neatly down, we think the best way to get him out is this bit here is rubber, and, and I think the best way is just it's not the most beautiful. You could file a little hole or put a grommet in but if you're just doing it quick like me I think that will be fine because it's just against the rubber there and we haven't got too much exposed we can then now be careful with those other ends now because oof, he says there's me saying about connecting everything up maybe you should do that last right then this this end here is now is now live Woo. right then um connect these up first note note yeah. note Note to, but the, actually, having said that, what I wanted to do was I wanted to get them the same length. So, so maybe don't. Maybe just keep them safe somewhere. Maybe tuck them inside the heat shrink. I ain't gonna give anyone any trouble because what I wanted to do is I wanted to get this neat. Now, right. So that's the positive. The negative, we haven't got anywhere super nice, but we found this little bolt down here. So this is underneath the main connector. There, we've got this bolt here. So you need an eight millimeter socket. And we've got it on some ridiculously long extension because <laughs> it's kind of tricky to get to. So, but you can get to it there. Right, let me whip that out. Right, for some reason, this is the world's longest bolt, um, which is actually quite good because we should get a good chance of getting a good earth on it. Now, I recommend you just clean up the underside of that head there just so there's a good electrical contact. And then we can get the little black wire, shine some light. There we go. Thank you, Tyler. Right, and, and then... It's not ideal, but it's pretty good because the oh yeah look 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 that fits under that head there perfectly there you go right and then back through there and you don't want to watch me do this massive bolt up again but make sure you get it make sure you get it in by hand first before you start going get it a couple of turns in by hand yeah that's in right and then I'll I'll tighten that up now right so we have the red and black now now bear in mind these are live do not try and cut through both of these together. <laughs> Right, that would be a bad idea. Mm. Right, I mean, it's you're only going to blow your 10 amp fuse, but again, keep away from that other live wire. It's a bit like you look, Tyler, he's a live wire. Reckless. Reckless. Let me see. Now he's super, he's super. Now, I think I'm going to connect him on before I go doing the air. Let's just trim him. To... Right. So he needs to go in the positive because he's just going to be trouble. So yeah, in he goes gently. Don't touch anything else on your way in. It's probably a bad way of doing it. But I just wanted to get the cables the same length. That's the reason I did the... Well, we can relax a bit when he's in, can't we? <laughs> We're Ooh. showing you the uh, not perfect way, so now you know, you see. Let me... Let this be a lesson. Let this be a lesson to you. You should be setting a better example to youngsters like Tyler, Simon. I'm going to have my... Institute of Mechanical Engineers. No, the mechanical engineers don't care about electrical stuff. Though. They'll be stripping me of my, my institutional oh, chartered engineer. Mm -mm. Right, and there we go. What have I done? He's, he's fighting me a bit now. There we go. Right, um, oh. right we should. We're all connected up then, aren't we, Tyler? Yeah. Now, don't heat shrink it yet. Now, 
Let's have a... Just in case you've messed it up. Right, you do have a fuse on this circuit board here as extra protection. And obviously we've got the fuse in the connection. So I'm just going to put that in there. He's just gone. We t you got that heat shrink just right, didn't we, Tony? <laughs> didn't, give, didn't want to waste any money on super big heat shrink there, did we? Nope. Right, uh, it's big enough. There you go. Right. So that's going to go in there. Again, you can you can make that a little bit neater. Right. We are going to test it. We're going to put the headlights in. Test everything before you bolt everything out. Otherwise, your debug is going to be a big strip down again. So we're just going to rest the headlights in. Put that in. And let's see if everything works, shall we, Tyler? Okay, so we're in a darkened workshop with the Freelander 2. So, right, so let's start it up, and it should, it'll be a slight delay, and then the, the DRLs should come on. There we go. Um, so that's the DRL. I don't know if you can see, but it's got, like, the C shape on it, is a C. Right, and if you turn the lights on, Tyler... You should see the DRLs, the side light, you should see them dim. So do that again. You can see that. And again, yeah, dim. Right, put the full lights on, Tyler. There we go. Obviously, I've got different headlights in each side, but don't worry about that too much. Um, indicate. You'll notice now that it turns off the one on the respective side. Okay, turn that off. Okay, um, there's a slight delay where that comes back on. And then if you try the other side, yep, that's all good. Okay, turn that off. Then maybe if you put the fog lights on next, Tyler. So there we go, fog lights off, fog lights on. There we go. And then if you turn the car off, Tyler, turn the lights off. And then there's a delay. So after he's turned it off, there'll be a slight delay which is the sort of follow me home function. So you can see that now. And I think it's about 30 seconds. And then they will, you can, I was gonna say you can jump out the car, Tyler. Leave, leave the car, yeah, you need to walk to your mansion. So, right, we'll spin the car around after we finish this, just wait for this to do, and then we'll show you the beam pattern on the door. There we go, so that's all good. Right, so we'll spin it round and let's have a look what those beam patterns look like on the door. Right, we're in an even darker workshop now. Right, and Tyler, so do you want to put the turn turn it on? And let's the DRLs will come on. There we go, that's the DRLs. And that's the pattern you get on the workshop door. You can see that's fairly easy. Now if you put the headlights on next, Tyler, go to the headlights. You can see, there we go, there's the headlights and you can see the sort of right-hand drive beam pattern where you've got this sort of kick up there. Um, that's dipped headlights. Now the fog light, you put the fog lights on, you see they come in lower along the bottom there. So turn them off again, Tyler, and then on again. You can see that's the perfect, you can actually one of them's a little bit lower than the other. We perhaps need to adjust that one up a little bit. Um, so you may just pop that out and adjust those so they're both the same. But there we go, so there's the fog light beam pattern, all looks good. Um, so there we go, good luck with that. Now the next bit of the video I'm going to put up will show you some of the problems we had with this Freelander 2. It's been a pain in the backside to be honest. But those of you who are interested, here's a bit of the development we've had to do to make this work on the Freelander 2. So hope you enjoy that, good luck with that. Right, so yeah, well, this is at the end of the video. So when we first installed the lights, it did it, they didn't work. And we're like, why? It wasn't dimming them. And um, it was quite an interesting problem because the side light wire had 12 volts on it and the board looked all right. But when I connected from the battery positive straight to the side light, the yellow wire there on the, it would dim the board. So I thought, well, why is it dimming them at 14 volts and 12? And uh, I had a word with Bernard who designed the board has helped us. And he said, no, 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 the circuit should trigger at 12. He said, just check the pulse with an oscilloscope. So we've, we've checked it with an oscilloscope. And sure enough, what we've got is it's got this sort of pulse width modulated signal where it goes on and off. 
And so it, this is confusing the board because it goes off. And this is only a period of, of milliseconds. It's only like eight milliseconds it's on and then two milliseconds it's off. Now we don't get this on the Disco 3 or the Sport. So I think we're gonna have to add a capacitor to smooth this out. But yeah, so we, we were in, we just thought we had it all sorted, um, but we had this little technical, in, which is why we like having the project cars so we can fathom out all these problems so you guys don't have to. But let's see how we get on. So by adding this capacitor here across the positive and the side light signal, we've managed to change the waveform on the oscilloscope. Instead of having that big dip that came right down and turned the lights off, you see it's just diminished to a little little mini dip. So that now means they all work. And